get on me start us off. That's it. We're live. What is up, everybody out there? Welcome to another episode of the Sneakers Through Your Speakers podcast. We are your hosts, OT Dub, and my good buddy Seth. Um, and we're here with a really, really good friend of ours and a really amazing YouTuber and family man. Shout out to DJ Hess Kicks. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good to see Thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. This is a real pleasure, man. Seriously. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys invited me. I'm much appreciated. And I'm, I'm excited to be chatting with you guys and the viewers and talking about some sneakers. Let's do it. Wait. Let's do it. So let's get so, straight into it. Yeah, man. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your YouTube channel, and sort of how you got into sneakers and YouTube? Uh, man, it's crazy. Like, YouTube is one of those things that just kind of jumped off. And, like, you know, I never really understood, like, the YouTube culture, like, Seth, it's kind of fun for me to see channels like yours show up that like are very well formulated and very well thought out and like <laughs> make really, really solid content. That's not that's not how I started out with this stuff. Like it was like more like uh, a passion sort of thing. And I saw other people like like sneakers on YouTube and the, like the older YouTubers that are most of them are not even around anymore. Like J Star was one of the one of the ones that got, I really liked. And Dell's back mm -hmm. in the day for sure was one of those ones that I really liked. So that whole sneaker culture, as soon as I discovered it online, like I was like, man, I got to be a part of this. And I had, um, I've been DJing since uh, 2003. So uh, ever since I've been DJing, I've been buying sneakers on the side. And I've had, I was just one of those dudes that I had a lot of regular friends and none of them had uh, sneakers. And so, but I had a hundred plus pairs in my closet already wow. at that point. So <laughs> I was like, man, like I, I, I wanted to complete the Air Jordan 1 through 23 collection and just at least one colorway in every every model. And once that happened, and it just kind of blew up from there. But YouTube has been crazy. It's been super fun to be able to share the passion of sneakers with other people. And it's just been really fun to to, to be a part. And up until recently, awesome, you, you, you've been on your phone, right? Yeah, like man, up until spent. last year. It's not <laughs> even been crazy. a full year. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been um, using a regular camera yet for a full year yet. So yeah, up until... Wow. Recently, man, my iPhone, this was my lifeblood for, for the first so like five sweet. years on YouTube. But yeah, but it's, it's better. Um, it's fun to be able to see um, higher quality content, not just in, in sneakers, just across the entire like YouTube platform. And it makes you want to strive to do more things and better things. And so I've tried to increase my quality a little bit since then. And I mean, I wish I had more time to really knock out. Like if I, if I had four or five hours a day dedicated to be able to produce content, like I think that my content would be much, much more polished than it is. But fortunately, I'm doing what I can, and I'm not even posting every day anymore. Before, I used to post every day, and I just can't do it anymore with the fam and stuff. So, kids almost yeah. two in December. He's two, so like I gotta make sure that I uh, that I that I have time for you know all the other things. But yeah, it's been crazy though. It's been a fun ride just with starting with the iPhone. Yeah, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah. wait, you got his birthday's in December. What day? December 10, man. Turns it's two. Oh, that, dude, that's my little brother's birthday. That's crazy. Oh, word. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Christmas, baby. <laughs> yeah, good time that's of year. Awesome. My favorite time of year, man. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, really quick, shout out to Electric Shock for the donation, yep. man. I really appreciate it. He was on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and he was. you guys should definitely check it out for sure. But, uh, yeah, so you mentioned, I know, I've been watching your videos for years. Like, you're one of the first people I started watching. I mean, I love your channel. I've always loved your content. And I know, um, I mean, I'm sure you've mentioned it in multiple videos, but you used to wear test for Nike. Yeah. Is that something you used to do? Yeah, man, awesome. it was crazy. I used to test, and I was a lot better shape back in the day. When, in, my, <laughs> in my younger days, uh, uh, more athletic days, like I played basketball all the time, uh, day and night. And um, I actually tested, wear tested basketball shoes for Nike, um, which some of That's them were awesome. Jordans as well. And then I also did some cross training stuff as well. I just... Where they basically just sent me shoes to beat up at the gym. It was just, it was fun to be able to get those and and do that. But yeah, it was a cool experience, man. Like you had to Nike headquarters, and like right. you basically go in through the in into the gym. The Bo Jackson building is this. This is the way it used to be back then. And then That's you fill crazy. out these forms. Yeah. Then they bring out a bunch of prototypes, and some of the air bubbles are like taped up so you can't see what technology they're actually working with in case uh -huh. they're bringing something new. And then you right. play in one pair. And then um, after a couple games, you'd swap into another pair, and then you'd compare all of the ones that you tried. I think three, or, two or three or four of them, and then you would you would like say which one you like the best out of all of them and stuff. So it's kind of cool that they did 
some sort of sampling like of the population before they went out and released something that was um you know potentially not awesome now was this before you <laughs> is that something that they started during or after was that was that before youtube was it oh yeah yeah this is this is way way this is before i started djing this is like in my like oh wow way, oh, yeah wow. <laughs> this is like way way long time ago um yeah so this was before like even i went down to oregon state and stuff yeah for college so oh. Yeah. Oh, gee, in the That's game, awesome. not playing. Is this something? Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, is this something that they still do now? Like, is this something for people who live out in in that area that they can still do, or is it kind of been nixed? I don't. I'm sure it's possible. I just don't know how they're doing it nowadays. Like, um, right. you just there are certain people that you can talk to. I they pr probably have people you can reach to, out to on their like on just Nike.com that give you pass down to the channels of the people. I'd have to see how they do it now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they they have to have wear test samples. Back then, it was like different because you had to have you had to be a size nine to be. Oh, a, really? Um, wear tester. And I think <laughs> it was nine or thirteen um, was it. Mm -hmm. So like so then you got your guards and you got your you know your your big men, and that oh, was kind of covering the the different types of models. But um, but yeah, I don't know how they do it anymore. It'd be kind of cool to see. Unfortunately, I'm not in shape enough to be able to run up and down the court anyway with the young folks, <laughs> <laughs> giving it a true test, you know. <laughs> the casual, the oh, casual yeah. wear test is what I'm about now. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, pair that you wear tested? I mean, the favorite you have pair. A favorite pair that... Yeah, it has to probably be the the Jordan six, the Jordan sixteen, because that one was like oh, wow. that one was cool. It was like the first time it was like a flagship that I got a test. Um, I remember right. the fifteens, and this is crazy. Like a lot of people that aren't from Oregon or or see headquarters or understand the culture there it's like mind-blowing to people when you for the very first time you see it because like i mean people walk around the place with samples like all over the place if you mm -hmm. walk through the the cubicles where people sit they have samples just sitting on the end of their like aisles and stuff like m m fours and like m m twos and whatever just chilling at the top <laughs> and, and just crazy. not even those the sample versions of those like just the craziest stuff and there's so much stuff out of Beaverton that never makes it out that people just have no idea that even existed or that would have existed or just projects that got scrapped right. early renditions and early samples. It's, it's insane the amount of stuff I used to be able to see. And then, yeah. um, I mean, even some of the stuff had to be in lock and key that they'd pull out and be like, this is one of one super special just for X, Y, or Z person. It was crazy, man. But, right. wow. um, I, I, oh yeah. So the, the 16s were, were nuts though, because, I don't even know. I'm going on long tangents. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to hear about it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was crazy. crazy, man. It's it's cool to be able to like share some of that. I wish people like could see some more of it because it's such a crazy, like the biggest sneakerheads that you've never, um, the biggest sneakerheads with the biggest collections you've never heard of. Like right. pretty much, the, just because there's Instagram and stuff out there now, and there's people that have made it really really big on Instagram because they're sharing their crazy PEs, one of one samples and stuff. There's people out there that have twice as much and twice a better collection that can't even show it like and i know quite mm. a few of them personally it's crazy the stuff that that they have um but anyway testing the 16s was nuts the fact that the straps like they were trying different versions with magnetics and then velcro and like trying to get it so that the sheath would actually stay on your foot while you're hooping was really really challenging right. and stuff so it was kind of fun to be able to see mm. and they they really they um knocked off that like that was the one for sure where they taped up the air Unit, so you had no idea what you were working with, and you couldn't awesome. see what it looked like and stuff. So it was kind of cool. Awesome. That's what. Um, what sort of a sheet system did they go with? Did they go with like the Velcro on one side and then the magnets on the other side? If I, I think that they did a bit of both. I think it was magnets okay. up and then Velcro at the top. I think is the way that they actually end up releasing. That yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Very cool. That's yeah. crazy. I remember. I think it was it was one of your videos or something. It was maybe the uh, something like the top five shoes I regret gave, giving up or something like that. And you said something about I think it was a that, that you got you got oh, yeah. to keep or wear a test or something. You know, that's crazy. Man. What, yeah, what the happened full with that? composite ones were nuts, man. So and, and I didn't actually ones, get a right? wear test. What, yeah, it was the blue ones with the Nike on the side. It was actually oh, I'll show yeah. you real quick. It was it was like I mean these are the. This is the OG. Shout out to Sneaker in the Bay. He's actually the one that gifted me this pair. But um, it had awesome. Nike like written right here and like kind of embedded inside the foam. And it was just, no it was way. like a, a crazy sample version of them that they had. And I had, so the guy that actually um, 
was hosting the the Nike like basketball like test sessions, he ended up like because I told him, dude, I'm a huge phone posit fan. Like, can you give me him for a, like a decent price? Because you know, two 180 bucks at the time was kind of crazy. And this was a and back in '99 or so. So these came out in '97, and then this was back in '99. But they had the Nike here, so he ended up selling to me for like I think 40 or 60 bucks or something like that. Um, like, I don't know. He wasn't probably supposed to be selling them. Cause 40 was, bucks. Yeah, 40 <laughs> bucks. Yeah. Give me five pairs, though. I had, I had two black pairs, a white pair, and two blue pairs. And I traded. I ended up, I think I ended up selling the the foams just randomly, but not as a sample, just as a random pair. I just said, and it, even worse, it was like, hey, here's a, a beater pair with no box. It was not like, right. this is a super oh ultra rare sample. Somebody came up on those ones for sure. But the other pair I traded for a really crappy, really, really crappy golf set, uh, golf club set from a friend. <laughs> like, Cause I was like, I needed to learn how to golf. So like I bought his super crappy set and that was the, the other pair that I got rid of. So super bummed, but things like that happen all the time back then, man. I didn't know what I had and didn't know what yeah. I was like being given, you know, pretty funny. Well, the real question is now, have you won enough golf tournaments so that the money that you made from <laughs> golf make is up? Worth Absolutely it. not. I was so bad at golf, man. The only thing I like to do is I like to go golfing with buddies and then, like, drinking a beer at home, like, if I can do that. But I'm terrible at golf, man. <laughs> and it's too bad. I can I can do a mean uh, mini golf uh, first hole or second yo, hole. Yo, that, that, dude, all down that's hill. all I can do is mini golf. That, right. That's fucking extinct. <laughs> That's hilarious. Is anything moving? If there's any turns in the mini golf course, I'm done. Like that's it. <laughs> for that first, for that first hole, I'm okay. That's hilarious. Well, um, are you like what? Um, what's where can people find you? Like I can tweet it out on my side or whatever. I don't know where. Um, where the, people are watching. On his on his oh, channel. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. If you go to uh, my channel, there should be. Uh, I'll DM you the link. Cause... Okay. Cool. Sorry, I just want to make sure I say something yeah. for people. Let them know that we're out here. You might have gotten it. Here, while we're doing this, why don't we take a question from the chat? We'll take one or two questions right now. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let us know. Let's see. Uh, Son of some man's in here. What's up, Edwin? DNA Kicks. What's up, DNA Kicks? What's up, Julia? What's up, Hayden? What's up, Joe? What's up, Grady? What's up, Brandon? All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you. But uh, I guess recently, you know, with a lot of sneakers not selling out, um, both both Jordan, um, Nike, and now Adidas too, Adidas Boost sneakers. Yeah. What do you What are your thoughts on the direction of sneaker culture and sort of what's going on with this? Do you, Do you like the fact that it's easier to get shoes, or do you think it's you know going to cause some problems down the road? Like, what are your I've, thoughts? I've definitely covered this in a handful of different videos, just in in general, because there's so much there's there's just so much to talk about. There's so many different. Uh, aspects of of the sneaker culture and and there's not just the consumer side um the mass consumer side like us versus like right. the business side with with these major corporations like right like not knowing if people that i know at nike headquarters are going to get laid off like 1500 jobs are getting cut like that sucks man wow the fact that wait that was that's, that's, yeah, that's the actual thing that's happening right now like they've been letting off hundreds of people here and there like randomly we'll hear like they, they let go 150 people this friday or whatever like it makes local news pretty big but maybe right. not national but but total they're, they're letting go 1500 jobs it's a big impact and they were going to be wow. building this billion dollar campus at beaverton headquarters huge huge ridiculous um project and now like a lot of that's going to be Hopefully, I'm assuming it's going to be on hold because I don't know how they're going to be able to do it. So, bottom line is that Nike's overexpanded for the most part. Right. Um, they didn't. They didn't anticipate the competition. They didn't anticipate people going. I don't need a retro every week. Like literally right. every single week, or or not not even every week. Five days a week, every single day. Yeah. There's yeah. two different pairs of shoes dropping. It's just overkill. It's but on the consumer side of it, like I'm like, like. I go to the outlet and I could find a really dope pair of shoes for 40 bucks. And I'm super geeked up and super happy about that because for me as a consumer, I'm like, I didn't have to pay even what I was paying at the Nike employee store back in the day. I'm paying like mm. a fraction of that. So yeah. as a consumer, we ultimately win. And, and the consumers, if you separate those markets, the consumer that really wins is the consumer, the consumer that wants the shoes. The consumer that only cares right. about the hype and only cares about what is popular 
you might, you're probably hurting your pockets a little bit because you bought a couple pairs of shoes here and there that you thought was going to sell for twice of what you paid, and now you're actually forking out 40 bucks to sell that shoe, um, and you're losing money on that right. shoe in some sense. So uh, I think that it's, it's – I mean, and all of us, we're all like I think in some sense – each type of consumer all wrapped up in, in a one just depends on what percentage. I mean, I've sold some shoes. I'm sure a lot of other people out there have sold some shoes and have made profit on it. And I'm sure a lot of us have, I, I've, I've given away shoes for, for cheaper than what we paid for them. And um, a lot of us like to find deals for sneakers as well. So I don't know. I think then you have the whole Adidas side of it. And Adidas has been flourishing, man. Um, it, the Adidas has been going crazy. It's been doing such a, a crazy, like, good job of, like, Expanding, but at the same time, are they over expanding to some extent? The fact that we can see all these right. boost shoes just sitting. And and for me, I have a really easy indicator for when the shoes are not selling out. And that's when I go to the Adidas employee store and I can see that the shoe that was sitting there two weeks ago for um that that was not fifty percent off now is fifty percent off. The fact that they can't sell it at regular price there, even though back in the day they used to, R ones would come in. The primate R ones right. and instantly sell out for full price or whatever it was. Yeah. So, like, yeah. at the end of the day, like over expansion is a real thing, and you, there's a real fine balance of supply and demand. And companies have to learn how to find that. And I think one of the things that um, some, I guess, both Nike and Adidas have done this to some extent, and it's something I, I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more of is something similar with the Gucci '97 drop. You have yeah. uh, shops dropping the white pair and the black pair. The white pair is more limited. The black pair gets a major GR comparison to the white pair, and it gives some people options to choose from, but it also gives some sort of level of exclusivity. If you yeah. did cop the white right. pair, then you feel a little bit cooler because you got the white pair, not the one that, you know, there's more of a GR. So I think that it's not a bad mentality, and it's it's not a bad game plan for these companies to be able to do something like that, because ultimately you reach more consumers, but you also have people feel a little bit special, which sometimes they want and need, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, that, you, that, oh no, go for it. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no it's okay, fine. <laughs> um, so, the point about the uh, the Gucci's, um, with the recent release of the uh, anniversary ones that just dropped, or anniversary uh, AM ones that just dropped, what do you think about that? I mean, they were super, super limited in that red color way when they dropped back in. It's not a GR. Well, it might be actually, but it's, I mean, it's really, it really wasn't hard to grab a pair. I mean, they were sitting at the Nike yeah. store in Soho yet well, yesterday, there. you know. Well, 140 on the retail price is just ridiculous. When I can find a pair of Air Maxes at the outlets for 40 bucks, like an Air Max ones, this is literally the same exact makeup, genetic makeup of the shoe except for the colors. Uh, it's right. it's 40 and it's 100 dollars cheaper at the outlet. At the same vein, I actually got them. Like I really, really <laughs> wanted a pair. Like the fact that I got, I finally am able to get a pair of those myself because I've been on the hunt for a pair of OG uh, Air Max ones from the beginning. And I want to have my collection. I mean, this is just the collector craziness. I want to have my an Air Max 90 in the infrared colorway, the regular Air Max 1, um, mm -hmm. the Air Max 95, and then the lime green. Like, for me, those three are the staple colorways for me. So I think it's still kind of suicide on Nike's end, though, for the fact that they're re-releasing some. I'm like, wait, 30 years? I thought we already celebrated something. When Didn't we celebrate something like last year for this? They already released them with the, the logo on the tongue, and then they have the ultra versions, and then the flyknit versions, and then it's just like so many, so many pairs that it's just kind of like, I don't know, like which one do I get? Or oh well, I guess I don't care anymore about them, right? Yeah. 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 What were you saying before? Um, good question. Oh, that's yeah. So I was I was asking, do you think that? Um, <laughs> do you think that <laughs> like? Nike's downfall, like with the job loss and everything like that, some of it has to do with Adidas' success that's going on. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean that's it's like, easy to say that, yeah, that there's definitely some because of that because there's this, and I I love my people at Nike, but there's kind of an arrogance uh, and like this like ah oh, work at Nike sort of vibe, right? And which we're elite, we're the best, we don't have competition. And they've you, been that way for a long time, though. That's that's a problem. It's yeah. it's been that way for so long that they've they're numb to the competition, and the fact that now we have real viable competition, uh, a company that's bringing real viable technology that is in the performance space, but even more importantly in the in the lifestyle space and in the sportswear like sort of space that Nike's not bringing, 
So the fact that that market, that's to me the biggest win for Adidas, is that they're winning the lifestyle market. Nike Sportswear has been hurting from what I understand. Prime example of the, these Air Max 1s coming out again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that they that Adidas hit a really small market, but also like the technology side of it's there to make it so they can really um, do some some damage over the long term with, with the numbers. And it's funny because there's people like, I work with just regular people, like most of us out there that are sneakerheads. We don't, we don't like not everybody that we talk to is all about sneakers. Mo yeah. Most people that we know only have like one or two, three pairs of, sh of shoes. Maybe one of those are sneakers. And those people are coming yeah. to me saying, oh, have you heard about these, these Adidas boosts or have, have you heard about these mm -hmm. Yeezy shoes that everybody keeps mm -hmm. talking about? When, when they've reached that much of the population and that much of the hype that regular people are like going, hey, this stuff sounds pretty cool. It's not even Nike. Like that, then, uh, then you know that there's going to be a polar shift in consumerism, which is what has been happening. And what I still think is going to, even though we see a boost sitting for now, I still see that happening for 2018 as well. 2018 is going to be a huge year for Adidas still, I think. And I, I think that Nike is going to feel the trickle down effect from the competition next year. And then in 2019, Nike will have re-established a game plan to, to hit the market in a more constructive and, and like precise way instead of just this mass like shoveling crap down our throats basically with all these releases yeah i agree definitely definitely and that actually speaking of nike um i know that this is sort of like moving on to a different topic but um you've done a lot of videos about dornbecker the hospital and also the dornbecker collection um are you are you attending this year's event and if you are what do you think of the uh the possible possibility of a dornbecker 12 man that it's crazy man i'm like i i'm really really anticipating this year's event i'm gonna plan on attending uh it's the, the end of october the last week in october usually it's in um i think the first week or so in november or something like that but um but the unveiling so the, what i go to is the actual gala event it's an, a charity auction event and um they do the unveiling of all of the shoes the kids are there that design them they're, I'm fortunate enough that they give me a media pass so I can actually go in and say hi to all the kids, to talk That's to awesome. them, let, let them know, um, let, you know, let them tell their story for how they created the shoe, what was the inspiration behind their designs, and then, um, and then they, they do this live auction and then it, it gets crazy and people bid twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for some of these shoes. Ooh. They raise ridiculous amounts of money. Um, and it's something that I have to pay out of pocket to go to every year and the, the money goes directly to Dornbecker Children's Hospital, which I mentioned in the past too, like I was actually, when I was a kid, I went there uh, because I had back mm -hmm. problems and whatnot. So it's just one of those like super, super nice hospitals. What up, Kat? <laughs> <laughs> Wolf uh, gang. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's just a great, it's a great thing all around. And I think that the hype part of it is fortunate and unfortunate. It brings more awareness to the name, which at the end is a win for the, the hospital. It's an unbelievable hospital. I've had a tour of the hospital. Um, met with a director of the hospital, and he's super, super chill That's guy. Great. Um, That's awesome. But I'm really anticipating this year's release. I want to see what the kids are going to be bringing and what canvases they're they're supposed to be working on. Rumor is the up tempo, um, the more up tempos, as well as the Jordan 12s. They already wow. did do a Jordan 12 Dornbecker, but it wasn't a release. It was actually the live auction, and they did it for Shane Victorino, right. who's a, a baseball player, um, and it had just some like some graphics on the side of basically a French blue 12 and um, and it was a cool box that they that they ended up designing for him but this one I think is gonna probably be kind of crazy kind of wild I'm anticipating some clear soles like it seems like every single year um, the Dornbecker shoe ends up having clear soles on them so I'm hoping to have clear soles and something cool with them um, but out of all the shoes like I sold like I kept all of my Dornbeckers so I That's eventually awesome. I'm gonna change the wall in the back I'm so lazy I haven't done it but um, but I'm gonna have all the Dornbeckers on display again. There's some of them back here, but uh, I'm gonna have all of them on display. I'm excited to be able to get them back up there. What about you guys? Any, any awesome. excitement? Any, any um, anticipation on any of the colorways or the, any of the models? I, I'm really just excited to see the twelves. Or if if it is, I mean, has it been confirmed that it's the twelves? Uh, nothing's confirmed, but the leaks are pretty oh. good. You know, that's the way it usually goes. Unfortunately, somebody ruins it, right. and then sends the images out it's only been like two years i think where there was no leaked images of the shoe and then it was dope like for me you will see it first but most of the time they always get leaked and then i'm like oh that, that's the one i saw yeah oh, okay. but they always look better in person than the crappy I, images that they end up leaking though but yeah i'm sure we'll see something I, in the next two really, or three weeks yeah 
Do you have yeah. a favorite uh, drum um, mecha shoe? Yeah, I mean, hands down for me, it's the fives, man. Let me see. The fives. Nice. Grab them. The fives are great. The fives are the glow in the dark or the uh, the black light ones. For me, for me, it's these ones, man. Yeah. Like this, yep. this one for sure is the one. Uh, like I met Isaac and his family when I went to the Dornbecker Gala. Actually, I'm, I apologize. I yeah. I met Isaac's family. Isaac passed away, um, which uh, is just really really crazy. And the fact that I was wearing his shoes and his uh, his family came up to me while I was wearing them, and they're like, "You're wearing our son's shoes," and I was like, I just my heart dropped. I was like, "This is crazy, man!" Like such a, a crazy surreal moment and something that I'll never forget. And the fact that. I mean, it's just shoes, right? But at the same time, it represents so much more. And sometimes yeah. you need those reminders, man. You can be so successful in life and do all these things and have all these material things. You need something to ground you and bring you back down into reality and like remember yep. and know that like life is precious and stuff. And th that's why it's something like this is like important. And I have actually, I lucked out and I got two pairs of these and this is the one I beat up. That's and then awesome. I have another pair of DS that I'll never, never get rid of. Yeah. Yeah, the fives are incredible. I love the fives. I love the story behind them, and I love the fact that it's like you have to use the black light to really see the the letters yeah. written on there. I think that's awesome. And that's so the crazy cool. that that everything that's all written on the shoe is actually written on the insole as well. And um, really? his mom said that him, he actually wrote that poem the day before he passed away. Oh wow! Yeah, that's super crazy. super crazy, man. That's one thing you really have to give. Um, I mean, just Nike in general is that they have they they've tuned their storytelling on their sneakers to a science. You know, Adidas has great shoes and they're they're doing really well right now, but they just don't have that same storytelling aspect. And I think yeah. that's something that you you can't just have right away. You have to sort of build it up over time. You have to learn it. And I think Nike's kind of got that that down yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Definitely. What's your favorite in the uh, in the collection or in the line so far? Uh. I don't know. Hold on, wait. Come back to me. Let me hear. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of good ones. I really did like the sevens. What's up? I, I was just about to ask if you had a favorite. Yeah, I'm gonna be lame and say the fives, but the fives are always because the fives, like <laughs> the fives, genuine. Honestly, like before I even knew about the story of the fives, I thought they were just the cleanest of the sneakers because I really like sort of the more minimal look and how there is that sort of second layer or that third dimension to the shoes. Um, which is why I really like them the most. Um, and then the story, I mean, just kind of bolstered that. But um, other than that, though, I love ones, so I'd love to have a pair of the ones eventually. Um, I mean, of course, the fours are incredible. Oh. The twos are, I, th I, I, mean, I don't know. I think the fives are my favorite, but all of them yeah. are The only one I'm not a huge fan of, only purely visually, is probably the 13s. I just don't like that color very much. Yeah, I lay swap those ones, and I, I really I like I really like it because the oh, yeah. the green or the, the off it was a really like neon color that kind of threw it off a little bit. I mean, it was a pink, um, but I or lay swap them with black, and I, I think they look a lot better. But yeah, that one's oh, definitely nice. a hit or miss for a lot of people. That dude's family was super super nice though. Uh, That's just John, awesome. his name is John. It's, it's hilarious because his mom actually watched um, some of my videos before we, she went to the gala when I met her, and she's like, I. I didn't know what this event was all about. I had to search it online and I found your video and it gave me an idea of what I should be wearing to this event because I didn't know how formal it was or whatever. It's, it's hilarious. It's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. That's crazy. You're actually, you're making a difference, you know, and people, are, that's, that's insane. That's awesome, right. man. Yeah, that's, it's definitely it's cool, cool, man. You know, I actually talked definitely. a lot of trash about my favorites when I first saw pictures of them. But then when I started seeing <laughs> them more and more, I was like, dude, those are kind of hot. And it's my favorite model. It's the Dornbecker 8. Like, I just thought oh, yeah. it was... Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really like them too hot at first, but then they like really grew on me, and they just became my my favorites. They're definitely one that you yeah. like. Not everybody can pull them off, but it's just such a clean model. Yeah, kind of loud, but yeah. yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. What's the? Um, I know this is kind of more of like a high beasty question, but I'm sure someone wants to know. I I, I want to know too. What's the <laughs> um? What what's the most valuable out of the collection right now? Is it is it the fives or is it the fours? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know about resale on them. Um, resale markets, I think, I think it's been going up and down. I don't know how. It's a good question. Probably the fives. I mean, I, last I saw yeah. these were going for like twelve, I think, or something like that. But um, the fours were up there around a thousand as well. It's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. I lucked out. I lucked out on the fours. I actually got those ones gifted to me. Um, gifted, like that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's gifted, sick. gifted, man. I got lucky. <laughs> really, really lucky. Yeah. From that's, from that's, people, that's a blessing. 
Yeah, man, from people <laughs> inside. So I, it was oh, definitely nice. legit. It wasn't like one of those ones where it was like, it, how is it going to be, you know? Yeah, I got lucky on those ones. But it was nice, man. I nice. was able to complete, complete my well, collection. This... So You're not missing well, any? Actually, speaking of that. None of the Jordans. I have all of the, the Dornbecker Jordans. Wow. Nice. I'd be really, yeah, you mentioned the, uh, the up-tempos are a possibility for this year. I'd be really interested to see those. Ooh. I think that's a great shoe, and I think, you know, it's, it's easy. To, it's not, I would say that's one shoe that you can pretty much put on, and it's, it'll still look pretty fresh. I mean, there are some whack ones, but a majority of them, I think, yeah. are clean. Yeah, sure. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping they have some really, really nice materials, like, um, because the, most of the GR pairs that we've seen are just meh. Like, the materials are not that good, and if they can yeah. go – crazy on this model and do whatever they want like at least i'm hoping that they went with some premium materials and some of the nike designers really helped influence how the creative uh the creative side of this for the kids last year i actually went to an, uh, a conference it was like a, a couple hour long conference with the designers from nike and the dornbecker um two two of the kids and they went through That's the awesome. whole entire process it was like a um it was for design week actually in portland and i went to it just because i knew it would be fun and but they went through the whole design process of all the shoes and most of the time like the kids say this is what I want and then the Nike dudes and girls they're so like good on helping them take their ideas and, and make it happen but um, yeah it would be cool hopefully that we have something really really nice on the, the up tempos this is one of the it's a great model it's just one that I think that they oversaturated totally. unfortunately <clears throat> yeah yeah they really did um, yeah, that was something I was wondering too is how much say did the kids actually I mean I, I assume because a lot of the stuff was you know they're you know, um, characters they really liked or influences or, or you know poems for that matter but I always wondered how um, how how much say the kids really do have over the sneakers and it sounds like it's I mean it's almost they map it yeah, out I mean, on they a piece much of paper have almost yeah they're like this is what I want and they're like and literally the the people the 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 Nike designers are like how am I gonna make this happen but then <laughs> right. but then they go for it like, I mean like you saw the the Batman Janowski's which I have those somewhere as well like they had to get the rights to that. The Superman joints behind really? me, they had to get the rights to that from Warner Brothers to be able to do it. And Warner Brothers, they come to the Warner Brothers or whoever has the um, that logo of copyright and they're like, this is a story, this is what we're doing. They're, they do it for free. They don't even charge Nike for this stuff. They, they get it, which is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. really awesome. One of the things, the sevens though, last year they had those, um, those sevens with the guitar pick and the guitar theme. Um, I love those, those yeah. actually. They're they're I actually really like those ones as well. Then they had the alternate pair at auction. Yeah. Only two made. Um, that alternate pair was more streamlined for the other version of what the kid wanted, which was like a Star Wars theme. He actually wanted a Star Wars theme for the sevens, and he wanted it to like light up and stuff and do all this crazy stuff. And it, unfortunately, it was just it was too much for them to be able to take on. So that was one of the things where they're like, it would have been nice to do, but they just they literally couldn't do it. Like so, that, they went down a different route on that one. So wait, they literally give them like a blank piece of paper and say, have your way? I mean, yeah, it's just like kind of like the Saucony journey that we went on when we designed our shoes. You give, you have a blank piece of paper of that model and then you just say, I want this here, I want this there, make wow. the liner this, the soles with this, whatever, like that's kind of what they're, they're given. They just, or from them, it's a little bit more simplest, um, simplified and it's like, here's, color in you know these things or wherever you want and then they, they kind of go from there that's so that's all. well speaking of the Sakonis, uh the pair that you designed is behind you right yeah man it's crazy can we take can we take a look at that really quick that's uh -huh. awesome how does it feel got skeletor chilling right here how does it feel <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> this is my this is the second sample that i ended up getting which is a little bit different than the, the release pair yeah that's awesome how does it feel, man, to have designed your own shoe, your shoe? Yeah, it's crazy still, man. It's like, I think most people are going to, I mean, the average person looks at them and go, I don't get it. They're weird. But for me, like, like they made it such a small run. And the fact that they made it with, like, my inspiration and what I wanted. And yeah. I didn't make this for the, the masses. I knew I could have made a shoe for the masses and for everybody and have more mass appeal. I didn't. I wanted to take something and make it uh, special to me. And, like, for me, it was... DJing the fact that that was really what that was that started my entrepreneurial career in general the fact that I was able to start DJing working for myself like working in nightclubs meeting tons of people and making money at the same time it gave me more financial freedom than anything and it uh, afforded me the ability to buy sneakers so the fact that 
like I took that inspiration and, and threw it back on this is a Technique 1200 turntable design. Mm -hmm. That was kind of, I mean, awesome. it was like I had to do it. And the fact that, that they were able to like make it happen like so well, like for what my vision was, it just I was, I was, I'm still speechless. It's pretty crazy, man. Yeah. That's it, it, it turned out great, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Pretty wild. Yeah, definitely. So, so you were mentioning before the uh, sort of the design process. How did that work? So they flee, do they, I don't know where their uh, headquarters are. Is that, in like the north OTW knows. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I met up uh, OT Dub over there. That was the first time I met him when we were yeah. back there and we went out to dinner and we had some drinks together. He helped me share my bottle of a whistle pig. <laughs> bottle a bottle of whistle pig back there. It's like an eighty dollar bottle of, of uh, uh, rye whiskey. He helped me drink That's that awesome. up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was trying to get I was trying to get uh, Bull to drink some, but Bull wasn't really feeling it and so a couple other people back there, like, were because it was all of us back there. It was crazy. It was it was super fun, man. The fact that they gave time. us an invite, they they flew like ten creators back there, and we all got to meet most of us for the very first time. Um, we got to hang out. We got a tour of the headquarters and what they do, and then then we get put in a room with a bunch of materials, and we're like, they're like, okay, have at it. Like like just put down like take pictures or or write down the the I like types of materials and the numbers and everything so you know kind of what you're working with and then um it was a quick three-day trip and then after that basically we toured the city and then after that it was like on your own sort of thing you had to design something mock something up and then send them a piece of paper that had the draft and actually i showed it in a, in a really detailed video on my channel of like all of the draft the mock-ups the first run mock-ups that i did um, there was three or four different versions of this that I actually ended up some with the purple some without I've done I did like right. a bunch of different themes even I did a Nintendo theme I did like uh, ugly Christmas sweater theme that's the one I really really wanted to do also like an ugly Christmas sweater knit theme um, as a mock-up so I, I mocked up like 20 different versions and this is the one I ended up going with uh, but it was cool man the fact that then they send you back a first sample and then you tell them now nah, let's change some of these things and then here's another um, run at it. This was my second sample, and then um, after that, it was pretty much like let's. They, they, they were going to produce whatever that they were going to do. So, which they didn't really tell us how many they were going to be making. That was the part right. that was kind of fresh, frustrating in a sense. And the, the main person that we were working on on this this project with actually left Saucony and went to Adidas. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually lives well, close right. to me, so it's, it's actually somebody that I can can hang out with. I haven't hung out with him too much. Only seen him a couple times, but. Um, but I need to uh, hang out with Brandon again, man. Like good people, but but he left midway through the process, so it was a little bit difficult. Um, and then we ended up uh, just just getting them done, and it was only 100 pairs made, unfortunately. And then we got a small friends and family run, which I don't know if the other dudes have said or not, but we did get some for us to be able to to disperse. Awesome. Well, I mean, now you can say you've you've created a legitimate shoe that's more limited than a pair of Yeezys. Like that's crazy. Right. That's insane. <laughs> right? I didn't yeah. even think about it that way. That's, but that's definitely uh, true. Well, we don't have the pull. We don't have a pull of a, a Kanye. <laughs> you, didn't didn't hilarious. didn't like a majority of everyone's pairs sell out? Like that's pretty impressive. That's pretty yeah, incredible. Yeah, sold out, right? I think all of them sold out. Yeah, yeah they all sold so out. That's, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty major feat, especially up until this point. Even this year, I think Saucony was kind of. I mean, in general, the market's been shifting major. If these would have came out last year, it would have been probably more hyped up than it. And I think that because of the situation, because of the influencers, like it actually worked out well for us because it was a smaller yeah. batch run and they, they ended up selling out and shout out to anybody out there that is watching or sees this video that actually copped a pair. Appreciate y'all for, for supporting. Word. What made you That's go with awesome. that model? Well, is that your favorite model? Yeah, man, the grid 9,000. This is the very first model that, that I fell in love with of theirs. I, there was a, a dirty martini colorway and that one like i saw and i was Ooh. like this theme is so sick and um and because of that i was like and actually they kind of go hand in hand nightclubs uh dirty martinis dirty and martini. my, my i see what you're doing I see yeah you're right doing, i actually <laughs> haven't got on the ground but uh, i saw the shoes and i was like okay so i got them and then i was like sweet i put them on and i was i was really impressed i thought the grid 9000 was um the most comfortable sock i've ever tried on so definitely my go my go-to that's awesome yeah. Well, why don't we move on to uh, Keon's favorite segment Aye. of the show? Yeah, Time you want to introduce what him, you man? think about. So basically, <laughs> what we do here is uh, we bring up three different shoes um, and we just talk about our opinions on them, whether we like them or not, pretty much, or hate them, or do we think they look like 
SpongeBob crying popsicle. So, <laughs> oh yeah, those Yeezys. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those Yeezys? Has the like the yellow? They're yellow, yeah. basically. You yeah, seen them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, right. I, they're like really piss yellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did, did you see that name brand's video where he? I know we're getting off track again, but name brand's video he uh, used the highlighter and then highlight like. Drew a pair of I don't know the zebras. He made them. To be fair, yeah, they really, not, it looked kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of look looking. Like, <laughs> they look identical. It's ridiculous. <laughs> that guy, I love that guy. I met that dude um, in New York last year when right. we, when I met you, Seth. And mm-hmm. that that dude is one of those guys we hung out with after like l- later at night with a couple of the other dudes. He's just super chill, man. I told him yeah. I'm like I always love all the shenanigans that he gets into. He's like that's a good word. I'm like yep, yeah, that's no, that's what he reminds. It's just sh- straight shenanigans, whatever that guy does. It's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> can't take it seriously but i love it yeah Too that's much. my that's my guy he's such a chill dude yeah for sure well why don't we start off with the first shoe right. and i'll put it up on screen share really fast it Which is obviously is. the pharrell nmds the trail editions that are coming out in november Hess, what do you think about what you think about these <laughs> <NMDs>? <laughs> man i so i actually really like them though i don't like that yellow and multicolor like one i think that's a, just a terrible colorway it just doesn't yeah. go and i'm yeah. not a, really really a big fan of yellow anyway like um we're like oregon state people here not beaver or not not ducks so like i don't know about that colorway but i actually like the overall model i like nmds even though they've lost some of the hype for some people they're not the most comfortable adidas boost shoe we already know uh but i think the model is actually not that bad obviously the complex con nmd with the triple black looks ridiculous that's the one I'm like I'm actually going to ComplexCon and I don't know how it's possible to get those, but I want those so bad. I don't know how it's gonna happen. The fact that it says nerd um, down one of them, like if you didn't know Pharrell was part of nerd, like back in the day, and um, mm-hmm. and nerd had like this lap dance song that was the joint. It was such a club banger, and uh, yeah. and those the fact that it says uh, nerd down the middle and NERD is just amazing. So and there, um, what is what's the word I'm looking for? Shine a light on it. What's Three, what is it? Three M, three M. Oh yeah, man, they, they just look ridiculous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in person and get my L. I know I'm not gonna get mine, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. Uh, but I think those ones look look ridiculous. So, but I think that they're cool. They're, I think they're probably not the regular versions. If they mass produce them, they won't sell out like the other versions of the of the frail NMDs. But it is what it is. I mean. Um, I actually like the trail spikes on the bottom. I, I need to try them out to see how comfortable they are and if it, it impacts the comfort of the shoe. Right. Right. Cool. What do you think about them, Keon? Oh, uh, I think first. they're <laughs> I think, uh, well, first of all, colorways, obviously the, the triple black U-Nerd colorway is, is, is the shit. I love it. Um, obviously, second would be this colorway here that's sort of more like gray and Right, yeah. and white and black colorway. I think that's. I think it's a really, really nice looking shoe. Um, I've had trail shoes. I don't really look at, look at Hess. See the need for it? <laughs> Just comparing. Oh, nice. <laughs> but, oh, the tangerine is the rarest colorway. That's pretty. That's pretty sick. Really? I thought it was the burgundy one. That's awesome. Bur- oh yeah, of the release so friends ones. and families. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair, yeah. fair enough. Um, I, I, am not a huge fan of the multicolors, but if I have the, if I only have the chance to buy the multicolors, I'm not going to say no. Um, uh, a couple other colorways. I don't know if they're actually dropping or not, but it's like this weird, like flesh colored tan colorway with like a blue and like pink. It it just looks, I don't know, but no, I really like the shoe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How about you, Keon? With me, I'm not a fan of like you guys know. I'm not a fan like the slip-on type shoe type of thing. Like I don't even wear slip-on Vans. I like to have like lace holes and laces and everything like that. But I will say that I do like the concept and design behind the the nerd pair. Like I think those are super dope with the 3M and everything too. I I I think those are dope. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. They're they're next level, man. These are those are those are sick. And I bet I bet you. I mean. You know, you know, there's going to be some other uh, some other younger YouTubers who live out in the LA type area who are probably going to have these about a day or two after they drop. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> but uh, at least You'll some see will have them so we can watch a review. <laughs> Definitely some flexing will be happening with those. A hundred percent. So the next shoe we have on the "What You Think About" segment is "What You Think About Midnight Navy." 
And uh, Hess, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know your opinion and also what you think about the rumors that these might actually be canceled or what? Or so what is or? that rumor? Does anyone? What's the cliff notes on that? Like, why do they cancel it? I haven't heard. Um, apparently, Rack TV Shift. Uh, he, he's actually been in the chat a couple times. Not today, I don't think so, but uh, previously, um, he tweeted out something about them being canceled because of production issues. Huh. Uh, which, which. Personally, I'm not sure why they would do that because, I mean, it's an 11. They've been producing 11s for a while. It's not like the last mm -hmm. they're using would change. I mean, maybe it's like the dye that they're using for the patent leather. I'm not sure. But uh, it seems a little odd to me. But apparently that's the reason they're either going to be more limited or they're going to be canceled. But my yeah. bet is that they're probably gonna, just going to be more limited and they're going to be a GR. And then someone found out they're going to be limited. And they're like, oh, no, it's canceled. To, like, build up. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't just think it's all a little crazy. Well, so I'm not sure about the the uh, the source of the rumors or like what's actually going to happen but at the end of the day like mm -hmm. it's one of those things where um it's possible because i mean we saw the orion sevens back in the day a lot of those ones there's mm -hmm. a white and like pink and and blue pair for those that don't remember them they had major production issues on those ones and most of them were just went to outlets like months and months later as b grades because they couldn't sell them as right. um a a ones because they were just terrible so, mm -hmm. so production um, issues do happen. They also had the photo blue nines. They were black nines, and they had blue bottoms. But they were, oh, they were yeah. black bottoms. They were supposed to be the, a different color. And so they mass produced hundreds of thousands of those or something in the wrong color. And then those <laughs> ones went to outlets as well. So, And for the factories, and I'm not 100% sure on the way that these are done, but they don't. it's not as smart as you might think where all Jordan 11s are made in one factory. Like they have so many different factories. Some Jordan 11s might be made with in this factory with some people, and then other ones might be made mm -hmm. in this factory with other people that have never touched Jordan 11s before. So there's a real realistic perspective of like them not coming out because of um, production issues. So I, I don't know. That being said, they must have really screwed up a ton of these yeah. things to make it so they don't come out. For real, um, definitely. Because those ones that even that pick pick has that widow's peak right next to the patent leather. And that usually right. was like a red flag of replicas or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, all that aside, all of that aside for me, I do not care about this colorway. Like, I don't care really? if it's limited. I just don't care about it. I don't like it. I'm not a, the biggest, which is funny, but I'm not the hugest fan of, like, navy blue or blue for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. It just, my heart. like, yeah, I don't know. It just for me, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. there's just nothing. I don't have any ties to that color. So yeah. for me, I'm like, right. uh if I had to choose, like if I had five Air Jordan 11s in front of me, um, that would be the last one I would probably pick for me personally. Right. So I, it, it doesn't matter if it's limited. It doesn't matter if it's a GR. It doesn't matter if it's canceled. It's one I'm not mm. even I'm not even looking at. Where? Hmm. Oh, really quick. Shout out to uh, Eddie Wynn for being in the chat. What's up, Eddie? What up? If you guys, last week Eddie was on with us maybe two weeks ago, but if you guys haven't checked that video out, make sure to do that. But Keon, what do you think about these guys? I like them. Navy blue, blue, any type of blue. Those that's like it's one of my favorite colors. So I definitely like them. And even it was it was I got like a little bit of Caroline blue on the Jumpman side. I'm saying, yeah, you know yeah, a little like, bit lighter blue, maybe a little bit lighter blue. I wish that was uh, navy blue. I don't really like how it's like lighter blue right there to be honest. But let me try and pull a better picture. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm not really a, a, the hugest fan of the that lighter blue. I don't know why they did that. I wish the whole thing was like that navy blue, but whatever. Um, I've honestly never even owned a pair of 11s before. What? Oh, Are you never. serious? Never in my life ever. Man. What the hell, dude? Yeah, never. Well, that's, 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 that's the difference, I think, maybe, because I've, like, I've had every holiday release from 07 on or something like that. So I'm, oh, I'm, wow. I'm, the, I'm the opposite end of the consumer where I've just had too much. You have you had enough, like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, now I can be more selective, unfortunately. But I've spent mm -hmm. lots of money to get to that point. You're smarter. <laughs> <laughs> You're smarter. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I wouldn't be surprised that? if these if these do end up if well if these do end up releasing. I wouldn't be surprised if people who missed out in the Concords or who weren't even into sneakers when the Concords dropped, you know, went for these. I mean, there, of course, there's a rumor that next year the Concords will drop again. Um, we'll see if that actually happens or not. But honestly, like I've always liked blue. Um, so I mean, if they do drop. I would definitely pick these over the uh, the all red 11s that are supposedly dropping in December. I think those are. I mean, they, back when the red Octobers came out, people were losing their shit, thinking that those were going to come out too. And I think the hype has finally died off on those. So I think it's the, the worst year they could have released them. But 
I don't know. I'm just the all. Let me pull a picture of those guys too. The uh, the all red joints are not not my favorite. What do you, have you guys seen those? No, yeah. I haven't. You have too late, man. I think. Like they oh, did, they did, they oh see, Hess, let me get those, man. <laughs> the con <laughs> but these ones are rumored next year already. I mean, the fact that the rumors are flying on Concords next year again, and even people like me, I'm like, okay, I'll get another pair in 18 because, like, I, you sure. know, eventually these ones are going to yellow out, and you can see the, the pods are all crazy, yeah. um, the bottom. Mm -hmm. Those red ones, I think, would have been good two years ago, man. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, see, I'm not into red, those red at all. Red. Like, after that, like, I don't know, that whole all red shoe hype, I just – I don't like it. Like the Red Octobers came out and all that stuff happened. Like I liked them for a little yeah. bit, but now all red shoes. I'm just I'm super over it, man. I think they'll still yeah. sell out regardless. But um, I mean, it's just it's that's a, one of the models that I think Jordan Brand has obviously been very conservative with. They have they don't release 10, 20 colorways of uh, 11s like at least mids every single year. They've done a lot of lows, but. We only right. see two, maybe three max, like of usually it's just two uh, a year of the 11s. So I think they're more coveted because of that. But also because of that, they can mass produce way more. And the fact that they released like a million pairs last year of the last mm -hmm. holiday drop was, I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So why don't we move on to the, the last shoe and the what you think about segment? The Under Armour Curry 4. What are you guys' thoughts on this sneaker? Uh, Wait, man. is it? <laughs> I, love, I love the groans. Uh, <laughs> well, it's... you know, I'm not a basketball player. So, I mean, is that a sock liner? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the mids, yeah. They kind of look like crazy explosives, to be honest, especially in that colorway. I hate that yellow colorway, but I don't, I don't mind the uh, the white and the black colorway at all. Let's see if I can pull a picture of those guys. I mean, it's like maybe I'd be into them if I played sneakers. I mean, whoa, if I played basketball <laughs> <laughs> or something. Like, I guess I'd try them out. Like, I think wearing loud sneakers on the basketball court is pretty cool, and right, like being able to like I don't know test out different comfort levels and traction and everything like that. If you were a basketball player, it'd be super dope. But otherwise, I'm just, I just don't do basketball. Well, sneakers specifically made for basketball, you know? <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I don't feel like that's a casual shoe. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, definitely that's the words, I yeah. think, for sure. Casually, I don't know if I could pull those off either. And I try, I, I stretch. I mean, I go for it. I, <laughs> I really, really try. Super ultra performance shoes, I go for it sometimes. But um, speaking of, let me see. I got, I got these guys here that I, a lot of people flame. I was for. just about to ask about those. They're yeah. like, man, I can, why Hess? Those aren't for you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. But I want to try the technology. Um, yeah. Like technology is a good thing, but at the end of the day, like, uh, and 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 it's a trickle down. Eventually, you want to be able to to make that shoe comfortable, and and if it's good enough to run freaking marathons, in, why can't I walk to the grocery store in these or something? Right. right? Like, right. I think those curries are. Yeah, I, they had a rough year last year, and I feel like mm -hmm. they're not going to get any better this year. I don't know the price point on those. <laughs> I think that the, that it's going to be a good shoe for the court, but competition right. is super stiff on the court right now for, for um, basketball sneakers. Adidas is bringing some really, really strong ones. So is Nike um, right. for on-court performance. But then you have the people like me going, like, how to casual? Like, how am I going to casual those? And what about the lows? The lows look terrible to me, and I'm oh, traditionally a fan of the lows. Like, yeah. Uh, so that that to me like kind of ruins it. But eh, it is what it is. I mean, hopefully we'll see leaks of the Curry Five <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're already looking for the. Yeah, Curry. I'm looking for the Five already, man. <laughs> speaking of um, speaking of basketball shoes that are, are are not so much lifestyle, what do you think about the Thirty Twos? Do you do you actually like the way these guys look? I think that I could probably pull those off casually. I need to see them in person. Is it an attached tongue on there? Uh, it looks like it's attached. Yeah, I mean it's it's. Hold on, let me see if I can unlace these a little bit for you. It's um, some, it's, a, it's attached, one. but not to the. It's like it's it's it's. Wow, well, I can't even talk. It's like attached, <laughs> right at the base of we'll like see. right here. But it's a the the see. tongue. There we go. It's like attached right there. Okay, so it's like a five, like or no, not a five. Yeah, yeah, five has well, the the five has the elastic around the side right here. Um, I think those. Right. I don't know. I loosen those up, like, and throw them on. I could. I, I think I could pull those off casually. 
Uh, I, I mean, I I wear the 29s, the 30s, the 31s um, casually as well. So it, it is what it is. Uh, I think those look good, but at the same time, I'm like, man, they they've already like shown us like probably eight color. It seems like I've seen like eight or ten colorways of the 32s already, and I, we haven't even seen one in hand. And I'm already right. like, oh, yeah. I'm already like oversaturated to the point where I'm like, well, I, what are they doing? But um, I'm if they're comfortable, I definitely want to give them a try. Again, I was I was a pretty big fan of the Shattered Backboard 31s. Um, mm -hmm. Were one of my favorite new Jordans uh, to release in a long, long time. I just the colorway is perfect for me. Obviously, black and orange um, for the Beaver fan, but like the <laughs> fact that, um, but the fact that they, the the colorway just came together with the gum soles, I, I really like that one. But we'll see about those ones. I yeah, don't know. I need sure. to get those ones in hand. Jordan Brand. I'm like the only YouTuber that Jordan Brand didn't send those to. They got they got issues with me, they man. Them guy that I had to buy them. <laughs> They said, you know what they sent me instead? Let me show you what they sent me instead. Where are they? They sent me these friggin' uh, which I mean, still very happy I got them. Still very happy to send them out, but they sent me these 11s instead. Oh, yeah. Dude, oh my, let me tell you guys about those sneakers, right? When I was in middle school or high school, I don't remember which one it was. Um, those are the 11s, right? What are you, 11 EX, yeah. 11 something? I right? 11 IEs, yeah. 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 So yeah. when I asked somebody what were they wearing, they told me 11. So for the longest time, I thought those were the Jordan 11. <laughs> yeah, it, that's hilarious. They're, it was confusing, man. They didn't release the regular low top. They they had the IE on them. For, I actually really liked the, the original Concord colorway or the white and black and Concord ones. Um, I still have those in my collection because those are the ones I wanted from back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, those, so those, I don't mind those ones not that at all, but I'm not paying retail on them. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> well let's see what do we got now why don't we uh why don't we start setting up to take some questions from the live chat first of all shout out to another pair and to uh franchise cakes for being in the chat yo, if you guys yo. Have some videos, make sure you check them out for sure up, but why don't we uh while we're waiting for some questions to come in uh Hess, why don't you tell us i mean we get these questions all the time um especially in the live chats what what are some tips for new youtubers starting out and people trying to grow their channels Man, have rich parents. No, nah. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. No, nah, like really, it depends on what you're going to do. You have to have like, YouTube's a different beast than it was five years ago. If I was trying to join in now with my iPhone, it would be a lot more difficult. The, yeah. the platform right. um, has shifted and there's real, real talent coming in that, that can do a lot of really creative stuff. Um, so if that's not you, you don't have to go that route, but you have to find a niche um, that you can feel or something that you can bring to the table you can't like copy what everybody else has been doing uh to get to a recognizable point you really have to just bring something original yeah. unboxing video you can't just do unboxing videos and expect to get big uh, unless yeah, they're yeah. like diamond encrusted sneakers every single time or something crazy. <laughs> um, shout out to nick cannon <laughs> right exactly <laughs> yeah so you have to just be an original man and, and genuine at the same time um and you have to have some some sort of expectations Board. And what I've said from the very beginning, um, when I was a super small channel to even now, is that you have to create content as if you you have a million people watching, even if you only have ten. Right. Like so, even if there's right. only the small majority, you still have to create a con um, the content with the confidence of a million people watching that content. Because um, who knows? It, it's happened to me a couple times where I've had some videos just blow up all of a sudden on YouTube because of their crappy algorithm and some random yeah. video that I make goes viral I'm like that one I didn't even put that much effort into that video and that one got all the views meanwhile this one I put you know 15 hours of editing or whatever else yeah. into and it, it literally didn't get anything I'm like I don't I just don't get it like sometimes it's really really tough and it can be frustrating you just you, ha you can't let that get you down and you still have to be able to um, like not focus on the views uh, to be able to feel validation on what you're creating just make it and feel validated as you're creating the content but if you right. pay attention to the views, if you pay attention to the negativity, the thumbs up and the thumbs down and all that stuff, it just it weighs on you too much a lot of times and it just it derails your content. So just focus on doing the best you can and being happy with it. And then eventually, um, if it's good, like people will recognize it and and it will um, you know be seen. Hess kicks with the A1 advice. Man. <laughs> that was like the best advice we've ever gotten when we asked that question. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, that was thanks. great. <laughs> uh, genuine. It's somewhat genuine, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's see what we got for questions. You got anything, <laughs> Seth? Uh, well, Nicholas Vang has asked, I think multiple people have asked this multiple times. Um, what are your thoughts on the LeBron 15? Is that something you plan to grab? I, I mean, I'm definitely going to get a colorway, but again, it's that fatigue, man. It's like, right. cool, I've seen 15 colorways of the LeBron 15 <laughs> already, and I don't even have one in, in hand. There's not even one in store for me to see. That, to me, like, it is just overdoing it. I can hear my kid blowing a recorder downstairs, like the little old <laughs> recording. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're home the thing right that now. You get in elementary school. The yeah, yeah. I bought him one of those on Amazon, and he just he just holds it and just goes crazy. And, uh, ridiculous. Anyway, you, you must hate sleep. <laughs> he's a fun. <laughs> he's a fun kid, man. Um, <laughs> uh, and we have earplugs if we need them, right? <laughs> so yeah. So um, no, oh, man. What were we talking about? I don't even remember now. <laughs> uh, but have you ever seen those mask off memes you know where they always have like a meme of someone and they play mask off like the flute part yeah yeah somebody's yelling <laughs> I, I it sounded like i had a joke lined up but i didn't just never think of that. <laughs> i was gonna wait for it yeah uh that's hilarious um so so yeah so the 15s i think i think the performance wise i'm i need to see nightwing's video i've heard um good things about the shoe from his instagram i've seen posts um right but uh i think overall the it's hard because these new wave shoes that we're creating, it, it's it's all fly knit or like more uh, of some sort of a fly knit upper. And it makes it so you can't be as creative from the designer element, I think. You can do like different For weave sure. patterns. You can do solid colors, but you can't make dope graphics. And in some cases, I guess like Jordan's, you could have uh, with the weave pattern stuff that they did. But you really, it still limits the creativity from aligning different pieces on top of a shoe like like these and, and knowing you can add different colors yeah. with the different layers versus just one upper so i get it it's performance the one upper has its value add but from a, an aesthetic perspective and from somebody that's um for casual wear it's just not as easy to pull off and it it shows with the nike ids as well because every single model i've always like Nike ID'd something, but now I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with man, these. Like, dude, I remember you were the Nike limited. ID king. You, you got <laughs> yeah. ID for yeah, man. I, I used to love making them. And I, I still love making them. It just it, it makes it so much more difficult to create something when um, it has this crazy upper in it. That's the way the technology is right now, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, I think the 15s on court will get, are going to be great. I think LeBron's going to like them, hopefully. Um, yeah. But I think off court. I don't. I just. It's not going to be yeah. one of that's going to be mass consumed unless they do more of like what LeBron did in that kit show with the with the casual version. Oh, yeah. Had. Maybe they, if they do some more versions, not like that one, but like from the like the the lifestyle perspective, maybe they'll do okay. We'll see. That's awesome. So franchise awesome. kicks. Shout out to him. He has a question. Yeah. Hess, how large is Harrison's sneaker collection? Oh, now? man. I did a video on his sneaker collection <laughs> on his channel. He, I gave the kid his own channel. He has a channel? I got he has a, 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 like a toy channel. Eventually, when he gets old enough, I'm hoping he takes over YouTube uh, just because we're <laughs> unboxing toys. But, uh, yeah, he has like probably 40, 50 pairs, something like that. Yeah. Wow. 40, 50 yeah. pairs. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> he has a lot. Great. Anything down from like, like ones that don't fit him anymore to now, like I mean, up to size like seven y like so some of them are, are bigger for when he gets older mm -hmm. but uh but yeah he has he has right. too many man he uses the same three right now so <laughs> yeah. funny. does he have any yeezys oh yeah i think i see some in the back right behind yeah you. there's the ones right up there and then he has he has like five pairs of yeezys man every basically every one of the infant yeezys i've gotten at least one uh except for yeah That's i think great. almost all of them i've gotten them for him so he doesn't sneaker care. Collection is half the is better than half the sneaker YouTubers I know. <laughs> <laughs> he wears yeah. those. He used to wear those ones. They're a little bit too small, uh, but yeah, he he doesn't care about them. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now, let's see what other comments we got in here. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, another pair says Nightwing says the uh, LeBron teens are legit so far. Plays almost like a low top. Very nice. cool. Um, also, Nightwing dropped his uh, his 32 review today, which I, I haven't checked out yet, but I'm excited to see it for sure. Actually, Hess, are you in the chat? Do you want to pick out pick out a, a question or two to answer? Well, I'm looking for questions. Off white collection. Somebody was asking about that. Seth, like, really got in on the off white collection, man. Super, yeah. super crazy. Kudos to you for yeah. being able to get some of that. Uh, I, got I, really I need lucky. to see him in person. 
They are they pretty dope in person? They feel significant, like different than a, a one. Let me see if I can grab them. Uh, uh, they you are just activated them. They, you just activated them. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing for me, man. I'm like, I. It's hard to judge something based on a picture, and I realize uh, that. I, I got kind of lame. With the, I got, I got a little. Oh, that's not lame, one. man. You got to do it. You got a, uh, a really, really cool story behind it, and you got it all captured. Like, that's dope. Man, it was, oh, these are my favorite shoes. Like, I yeah. friggin' love these. And I am wear them to sneaker con, and I've worn them for the on-foot portion of the video and just kind of around my apartment. Um, I made sure to Swiffer before I wore them. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm really, like, if they were... My whites, I'd be like, screw it. Like, I don't care. I'll wear these, whatever. But because they have that, like, it's just Sharpie. Like, that, that'll that rub off so easy. Like, I'm just afraid. I'm just yeah. afraid to wear them. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. He did. He, that was just a regular Sharpie, right? Like, so I had a Sharpie with me. And I was really hoping that he would also write, like, Virgil was here on the other side, which he didn't do. I think he just, it was, like, basically a few of you guys, but there was, do, like, uh, it was called Office Hours with Virgil. And what you had to do is write like a 300 word essay and um, they didn't really give you any criteria for the essay. I wrote about how I was a designer and how I really liked um, Virgil's like design process and all that sort of stuff and how I, I really wanted to like, the line I was really proud of was something like I, re I also run a YouTube channel I want to and I, I want to share this with I don't, I don't remember what it was but I happened to win there was like I think 10 people per day for the two days that they were in New York that won and when I met them, they were all designers. So it made sense that they picked people who were designers. And then uh, after you met with him, you got to uh, go and buy a pair of shoes. They didn't tell you which pair you could buy. You got lucky like with whatever sizes they had. But on the first day, that I, the day that I was scheduled to go, they started late. So they're like, well, can you come back tomorrow? And I was like, I guess. I mean, I took off time from work, but I still got to buy the shoes. So usually what happened is you meet with him and then you buy the shoes and then you leave. But because I got to buy the shoes the day before and then meet with him the second day, I was able to bring the shoes with me and have him sign them, which was like the craziest thing. Oh my goodness, this is Harrison. Hey, hey this little What's man. Up? Say hi. Hi, Internet. They came up to say hi. How's it going? What's up, Harrison? Yeah, he's not done yet. Hi, look at that's you. Say bye-bye. Hey. Future hey, later, man. Star. Hey, kisses. All right. Kisses. Have one kiss. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> All right, thanks, little cat. Yeah, sorry, Bye. sorry. That's awesome. the dope story. No, no, that's great. I made my dad. That was awesome. Yeah, that was super nothing. sick. Yeah, sorry about that. They, uh, yeah, we're done. I'm done in like a minute, honey. Um, do you have your own sneaker room? Like, is this your own sneaker studio? Uh, I mean, sort of. Like, it's my, like, there's all my. Ooh. Boxes, but I mean, it's, this is kind of crazy because it's actually an offshoot of my bed. So there's like my oh, bedroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's, so it's like, like a, it's like a thing. it's like an office space, like off of the bedroom. But I actually have two, I have right. another dedicated room just for sneakers that that in the house as well that I I'm trying to clear out eventually. But um, so yeah, awesome. so got a decent sized house for all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't was when your uh, when your wife's in bed because she'll be like. No. Part of the reason why I'm limited in time, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Right. Sense. So you want to just snipe one of these questions off, and then we'll call it. Uh, More questions, and then we'll close out. Yeah. I'm trying to find one. No. All-time grails. That's a good one. Oh, what do you good. guys that's go good. for, it, kids? <laughs> the all-time grails. Why do you start, Keon? Um, I'm gonna now. say, yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> the black cat. Old school Vans, which Ooh. I missed out on both pairs. They have a black pair and a white pair, and I missed out on both pairs. Unfortunately, the, the black pair I never had a chance. Give, give me one minute. Hang. Yep. Sorry. No, uh, the black pair I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't get because I didn't even. I was way too late. But the white pair I could have gotten, and I was ready to get them, but I didn't realize they were dropping in Europe, and there was like a six-hour time ahead. So I got on my computer at eleven when they really dropped at like five in the morning or six. So. Missed out on those, but that's it. How about for you, Hess? Oh man, hold on, I gotta find it. You have to find your grail. <laughs> I think I got. Well, you have your, you have your grail. Yeah, lucky man. Uh, right. Must be nice. <laughs> I got, I got it right here. <laughs> you have them. That was quick. Uh, man, because it's like one of those. It's like Rosebud, man. You ever watch <laughs> Citizen Kane? Well, oh, go watch Citizen video. Kane if you haven't watched it, man. That movie's. 
like an old I saw school the video classic. When you talked about those, and like there's a blue pair or something like that too, right? There's, yeah, I have a white pair and a purple pair. I have yeah, both purple. of them all right here. But this is the one. These are Pippins, and there's a 33 on mm -hmm. the back. These are called the Dynamic Flights. It's definitely a shoe that most people are like, "What in the hell are these?" Uh, but this colorway, right. and the fact that this is like in just amazing condition. The reason why these are my grails is because this is one of those shoes that I had when uh, mm -hmm. I could not afford anything, I, like nothing, not in, not I, like not lunch for for school, not gr like dates for girls, let alone <laughs> anything else. Um, so, but this was the the runner up to the Jordans that I couldn't get at the time, and right. so it's just one of those things, man. It always brings you back, lets you remember the humble times when you didn't have anything, and, and you know, I don't know, it's just one of those things that you need that to like sometimes hold on to when you achieve any sort of success in life just to be able to come back and be humble. Right. So that's the humble shoe right here. That's awesome, man. I love that. That's so cool. What about you, Seth? Well, not. Damn it, man. Like, <laughs> I don't, I, it's going to be real. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really have one, one grail. I guess the closest thing I have, like I said, was probably off whites because of the experience I had while getting them. Um, design wise though, I'm sure it's, I mean, I think my favorite, shoe is is the red ones just in general so i guess you know maybe having a pair of the originals of those or something like that would be a grail but i mean there's tons of shoes that i'd love to have that are all unattainable that i could easily call grails but those would be the ones but why don't we uh why don't we wrap this up and uh seriously hey Later. why don't you uh do you have anything going on like anything you want to shout out or any like any no. new projects you're working on nothing just, okay <laughs> just trying to stay consistent man make sure i can can create videos at least a couple times a week for you guys and Hopefully, people are enjoying them and just just having fun creating content still. That's yeah. awesome, man. Well, for everyone who's watching, if you don't already subscribe to Hess, first of all, you're crazy. Second of all, the links to his channel and to all his social media will be in the description below. So make sure to go subscribe to him right now if you haven't yet. Same thing for OT Dub. The links are right underneath his right underneath Hess's links. Um, seriously, man, thank you so much for coming on. It was a real yeah, pleasure, I it. and uh, I hope thank that you. have you on again soon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man, love love being able to do this. I appreciate you for reaching out and let me. Be a part of it, man. Get me back in the chat mode. I haven't done this in a long ass time, so much, much appreciated. And keep keep doing these, man. These are great. I Thanks, gotta go man. back and keep some of the, the previous ones. I haven't been yeah, on the watch. A lot of fun. I'm gonna have to watch them. We've, we've, we've had a we've we've had a lot of the a lot of the sneaker YouTubers, man. And we've been blessed yeah. in that way for sure, for sure. That's awesome. I'll keep grinding away, man. 100K coming around soon for you, man. It's gonna Let's be. Hope so let's hope so. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. But seriously, thank you again. Thank you, everyone, in the live chat. I really appreciate you guys all being here. If you're watching this after the fact, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're watching this now, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Let me move the mouse over. What the hell is it? <laughs> Great way to end the video, isn't it? Awesome.